Hi, so um, recently on YouTube I saw one or two videos on this. This is a, um, a handheld arc welder, stick welder. Now I haven't actually found any sort of proper reviews. Most of the videos I've seen were like from dealers and manufacturers and so on. But I thought, yeah, this thing just looks so sketchy it would be interesting to actually take a look at. This was I think about 80 quid on AliExpress. It claims to be 120 amp output, 3 kilowatts input. And it's sort of, you know, sort of quite a big chunky thing. There's the uh, welding stick holder at the, at the front. This sort of unscrews. It's like a sort of friction fit in the front. And then your uh, welding rod goes on there. And it's got a sort of cable to a, uh, a grounding clamp and obviously a, uh, a mains lead. I have seen one or two other versions of this. This one's just got a simple three digit LED display. I have seen one that's got an OLED with sort of more graphics on it, but um, it wouldn't surprise me if that has maybe some uh, noise and interference issues on a handheld welder. Uh, there's a, sort of just one knob here that controls the uh, current and that just shows up with on the um, display. I should sort of put disclaimers, I've never welded anything in my life. You know, I've got a vague idea of what the various types of welding are, MIG, TIG and all that sort of stuff, but I've literally never welded a thing in my life. So um, there will no doubt be uh, significant amount of ignorant tree welding that that, that um, the more uh, savvy people point out in the comments. Um, I have seen a um, one sort of major difference in some of the other versions. This one outputs negative on the top, on the tip, and positive on the uh, clamp. Now, I, again, I don't know enough about welding to know what the, you know, I'm sure there's a reason for doing it one way uh, versus the other. I have seen a version where the clamp cable, which on this one is captive, actually connects into a similar sort of connector, and you can actually sort of swap the, the clamp cable and the electrode holder over, and you sort of you hold it like a different way around to get the opposite polarity but um, this is I just went for the cheapest one because that was probably going to be the most interestingly and uh, amusingly sketchy that I could uh, find. Comes with this um, high quality uh, welding glasses here which um, yeah welding protection isn't just about protecting your eyes it's sort of also about protecting your skin and face and all the other things that could be affected by UV and uh, welding spatter so I uh, don't really recommend using those. I know enough about welding to know that this is not really a set of welding goggles. Come to these uh, gloves and a carrying case and this uh, highly comprehensive uh, instruction manual. Um, one interesting thing it does give here is a sort of a, a block diagram which sort of shows it sort of mains in, bridge rectifier, IGPT bridge, um, transformer and rectifier type arrangement but uh, it's not really much more helpful than that. It's got some specifications, say 60 volts, no load, 120 amps, 3 kVA input, 14 amps. Um, this is designed for 220 volts. Now I don't quite know uh, how well that's going to work on um, 240 in the UK. Um, I'm going to take all this apart because I fully expect this to just catch fire or melt as soon as I plug it in. So I'm just going to take a look inside it before uh, attempting to use it. And there's this sort of, I think this refers to a different version that's got a, a bit more on the uh, display. It's uh, say not particularly useful. It says it's 45 kilohertz, which I mean, something like this, you certainly wouldn't want this to be what operating in the audio spectrum because it would be uh, an arc running at sort of an audio frequency would be uh, exceptionally noisy. And apparently, this is uh, convenient at high altitude. I suppose they mean sort of if you're working up a up a ladder or something. Which, I mean, yeah, if this works, I can see, you know, it might have some use cases where you want to maybe do some, like, tack welding or something, you know, if you're up a ladder or an inconvenient location to take a full-on welder. But, um, yeah, I'm really uh, not convinced of its usefulness, but uh, let's just see how sketchy it is internally first. So one thing that doesn't bode well, I... Um it comes with a sort of the European type two pin plug, obviously because of the high currents I didn't want to use an adapter. So I've put like a proper normal sort of plug on it. And uh, not surprisingly, the uh, mains cable is the dreaded copper coated aluminium. Not super, I mean, if this was pure copper, this would probably be a, about the right sort of gauge, like one and a half millimeter square. But um, for copper coated aluminium, I think sort of probably not. And there is this graph in the manual showing out ohm circuit voltage versus current. So it looks like it will do up to about five amp, yeah, from zero, zero to five amps. It drops down to, that looks like maybe 60% of its nominal um, 60 volts. So we're probably looking at, I don't know, maybe sort of 30, 35 volts or so at full load. Or it, it does sort of imply that the current is very constant all the way up to 120 amps. But that, uh, I'd be quite surprised. We'll maybe try doing some measurements if we can actually get this thing to work without catching fire. But oh no, it's got it's got automatic protection function of P perfect, so uh, it's probably not going to melt or catch fire. 
and indicates a 15% duty cycle. I don't know how typical, yeah, you know, what the normal duty cycle is for welders, but certainly cheaper ones will have a limited duty cycle because it, it doesn't say over what sort of time period that is. So we can see if there's um, any thermal cutout or any heat protection built in. And you see, this does have a very strong smell of transformer varnish. If you've ever taken apart sort of big, yeah, Chinese-made power supplies or um, UPSs, they've got a fairly distinctive smell of the um, transformer sort of coating lacquer and this has got really really strong smell of that now there's no sign of any sort of approvals marks on this which is uh, not really surprising but you probably wouldn't believe them even if there were some all it's got is the uh, read the instructions high voltage wear a face mask that's literally it okay so um we've got this little sort of power switch on the bottom clearly this, this isn't carrying the actual mains current i'm Bit disappointed that it hasn't got like a, a, a trigger because that would seem a really obvious thing to put on a sort of you know sort of trigger and release to uh, turn it off type thing but uh, also we've got a fan in the back components on sort of heat sinks i think this whole module module comes out and this this is obviously the main output transformer very heavily wound and that looks like about sort of three and a half mil diameter windings on there I've got a sort of copper strap going from the um, this board here up to the electrode holder. Another piece of strap going down and then soldered down onto the um, grounding cable. This um, grounding cable claims to be 16 square millimetres, but again, it is um, it's got a sort of rather thick insulation and maybe a, perhaps a seven mil diameter core, and that is again copper coated aluminium. Very large capacitor in here. Is that 400 volts, 820 microfarads. Oh, and one of the leads has just uh, fallen off of it. Not very well soldered. So a few bits of electronics, so we'll try and get all this out and take a close look. This is the uh, guts of it. On the top is obviously the control board. We've got a couple of um, multi-turn presets here, seven segment display. That I'm sure will be a microcontroller just producing the uh, digital display. It's literally, as far as I can tell, this is literally just sort of echoing the, uh, the setting as, as a digital value on there. Fan is rated 24 volts, so it's probably that's the uh, going to be the, the low voltage DC supply. So we've got that's probably a five volt regulator here to provide the logic supply. A few bits of uh, analogy uh, stuff here. There's a main sort of power, low voltage power supply here. That'll be the transformer, and then just a standard sort of switching regulator type um, chip up to isolator there. Very little coupling between these two boards. Actually, we've got um, the uh, on off switch there which just interrupts what I'm guessing is probably a uh, DC supply from the high voltage cap so I think the um, the mains just go straight into this uh, bridge rectifier then the DC from that is switched onto the main board into this uh, 24 volt power supply and then the only other connections we've got one one here which is right next to this current shunt this just says 1308 130 amps that's going to be the current shunt to measure the uh, the welding current so that'll be the sensing of that obviously it's a tightly um twisted pair there's a yeah this has been done as a twisted pair to avoid any coupling so it'll be quite a low level signal obviously with a very low impedance um, shunt there and then this is the only other connection so that's going to be the gate drive for the igbt's and we've got a transform here so those, these will be transformer coupled a couple of large caps what are these uh, 4.7 microfarad 400 volts i think those are actually connected across the transformer primary we've got some sort of solder reinforcing some of the um, pcb track here and here we've got some sort of just big lumps of copper um, this is the output rectifier these are i couldn't find the spec on this there's a manufacturer name is ic win murp 80 g20 so I think that's most likely to be 80 volt, 20 amp. And these are in sort of two dual diodes in parallel. So that's got an 80 amp rating, which I suppose is sort of just about okay. Thermal protection switch here. Got one IGBT G60N60BN. And another one over here. So this would be like um, a half bridge. This would be like a half bridge drive. Again, on these sort of thin heat sinks, so you've got quite a lot of air, you know, you've got the airflow from the fan blowing through these heat sinks, and they're sort of separate heat sinks, so there's no um, electrical insulation needed between the device and the heat sink just to maximize the, uh, the thermal transfer. And we've got this big chunky toroidal output uh, transformer. The, uh, the secondary looks like it's using two turns in parallel, 
and then there's just the um, primary rinding, which I think is one one term, which are these slightly darker colours. So you can see there's about two or three times as many turns. If you may bear in mind that the light yellow is the output, which are double wound, we've got sort of one, two, about four turns of that, and the primary we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and 12, 13, about 15 turns on the primary. And this PCB feels like it's got fairly heavy copper, maybe two or three ounce copper. But obviously they've reinforced and they've like put a wire here to carry the uh, the serious current. The mains just goes on with these onto these little uh, little spade tags straight into the bridge rectifier capacitor, getting straight across that. No sign of any sort of EMC or interference filtering whatsoever. Now I don't know if welders have got like an old historic exemption from EMC regs or not, but uh, there's certainly no attempt to do anything about the uh, noise and crap that this thing inevitably uh, kicks out. Got a nice little detail. I've got some sort of slots in the PCB to sort. Of keep these wires. Interesting they've done it there but they haven't done it done it here which is a bit uh, oh they've done it sort of this well they've done it at this end so that just holds this stop it stop it getting trapped when the thing gets assembled. And this chip this is a 3525 um, sort of standard PWM switch mode regulator chip was found in sort of a lot of um, low cost power supplies. Um, here we've got a couple of um, I think it's a dual MOSFET so these are forming an H bridge that are driving this um, gate drive transformer to provide the, um, the drive to the output IGBTs. And this is an LM358 op amp so I'd imagine that maybe is um, amplifying the output from that current shunt. Apart from that it's just a load of passives. Not really much else. Right, so let's see if we can actually uh, weld anything with this. As I said, I've this is the first time I've ever have welded anything ever. Just got a piece of strip and some uh, box section there to uh, try to tack together. Let's see what happens. Not surprising. We've got a very noisy fan. And we've got our indicator here. Which I'm guessing is amps, but it seems to want to go up to 200 odd. But uh, let's start off halfway and see what happens. It sort of does something that looks vaguely like welding, which I suppose is a start. This did just peel off, so I think that was mostly heating the uh, the base box section. Uh, not much heat on this, so let's uh, give it another go. Again, it's made a sort of, sort of attempt. That's actually quite a lot stronger now. Previously, it just pinged off. This actually feels quite quite well attached. And it's, it's quite burnt. I wonder if maybe the current's a bit on the high side. It sort of etched away quite a lot of that uh, strip. Okay, let's see if we can do some measurements. Here we've got on the left um, voltage on the electrode. The middle one is current, DC amps with a clamp meter, and the right hand one is the mains input, AC current going through a sort of plug in energy monitor thing. We'll start it off at judge for you welding experts that sort of that blast there sort of chewed through uh, three sides of that um, box section in that time that I was running it. Hey, just for a laugh let's see if it will make any impression on this uh, inch thick uh, lump of steel. Oh, 
Well, it has made a reasonable dent, although say the uh, although the uh, welding rod was disappearing at a fairly uh, rapid rate. Imagine uh, most of this blob at the side is welding rod rather than the original material. Right, I sort of got the impression I was probably running this a little bit on the hot side, judging by the way that the uh, material was just eroding away. So let's just for a laugh have a go at welding these two together at a lower current. Okay, something I noticed when I was sort of trying to weld is that it didn't seem to complain too much when the uh, electrode stuck to the workpiece and it was shorted. Um, I didn't see any indication of any voltage sensing on the output, so I think it must be just going to like a current limit mode. So let's see what happens when we just give it a, uh, a dead short to uh, eat on. So this is set at 50% at the moment. I think the, um, the DC clamp meter is a bit slow in responding, so it might take a few seconds to build up. If we turn it off, we can see the current going slowly, so that clearly is the meter and not the actual thing um, <coughs> ramping up slowly. So let's just stick it on full and see what happens. <coughs> Yeah, it doesn't seem too unhappy putting out sort of current into a short circuit. I'm not going to leave it on too long. Actually, it's only pulling about four amps from the mains. Of course, the output voltage is very low, so the power is quite low. <clears throat> Looks like I spoke too soon. Something does appear to have died. If we we'll turn it on now. In, uh, almost no output voltage. As you, I just had a click from the inside, so I think that might just be the thermal trip resetting. Let's uh, give it another go. Oh yeah, it's back to life. So annoyingly the thermal trip doesn't give you any indication that it's that that's gone. You just get no voltage, but no other outward indication. Let's just double check it still, still is working. Yeah, back to life. So this has been uh, off for about five minutes and just looking at the sort of internal temperature, that output transform was still about 45 degrees. It's about 20 degrees above ambient. Now, um, obviously this does have a limited duty cycle, but the only thing that's really enforcing it is that um, thermal trip on one of the IGBTs. So I would expect that maybe because that um, transformer has got a sort of fairly big metal core, it probably has a higher thermal mass. So, you know, if I was to guess what, you know, what would eventually die if you sort of use this too much, it may well be that transformer might melt down. The, um, it looked like it had fairly thick lacquer on the windings, but I think um, because the IGBT is like right in front of the fan and there's obviously less airflow by the time it gets here and less airflow sort of throughout the windings, I think sort of maybe yeah, that transformer ending up sort of just getting too hot and uh, disintegrating is possibly the ultimate failure mode on this thing. 
So actually that turned out to be a lot less sketchy than I was expecting. Okay, yeah, there's no EMC filtering, there's no internal fuse. So if the um, IGBT bridge did decide to, or maybe the bridge rectifier did decide to fail short, it could end up with a bit of an ugly situation if it didn't have decent input fusing. And the ground lead got a bit warm, but not, not excessively hot. Yeah, if I was using this sort of more seriously, I might replace the mains lead with copper ball. Having said that, I wonder if the CCA perhaps acts as a certain amount of ball ballasting and current limiting. It does seem to be able to maintain sort of, you know, 100 odd amps at 30 volts. I'm not really familiar with how that relates to sort of normal stick welders. Um, I think the question really is, you know, why? You know, why would you want to use this rather than a traditional welder? Obviously, one significant factor is that you know, this is quite heavy, so sort of maintaining, obviously, you know, the, the, the rod was sort of disappearing sort of fairly quickly. Obviously, I'm, you know, totally an experienced welder, so I would imagine that, you know, having quite a lot of weight on this, it's certainly probably something that you wouldn't be used to. Whether it's an advantage, obviously, it does give a certain amount of stability and it's not shaking around so much, so perhaps that maybe balances out the actual um, the effect of the weight in terms of manoeuvrability. But I think the question is, you know, What's the use case? You know, is this your only welder for things that you would like? For example, if you needed to do the occasional tack weld or something, and you, you know, that wasn't too critical, then that might be worthwhile. But you know, if you already had a proper welder, why would you use this? I think the question, you know, it's probably only if you're, you know, literally up a ladder or doing it in some inaccessible place. So um, I'm, yeah, welcome any comments from any. Uh, experienced welders down below but it's certainly a testament to sort of modern semiconductors that something like this is even possible and you know it worked and it didn't didn't blow up immediately so it's you know, a case of being engineered sort of ju just good enough to uh, to work so um yeah so i'd be quite interested to see uh, if there's any sort of experienced welders your know, stick welders maybe in the south of the uk or essex that want to have a play with this maybe you can uh, set up a session to compare it with and see you know how good is it as uh, how good is it as an actual welder for someone that knows how to weld properly but um yeah technically i think thought it was uh, quite interesting